we'll see how far we get. So that's going to be part of the going with the flow here. I did have a slideshow for you. It's not quite focusing now, so we're going to uh, go without that. So, um, but what I would like to do is, I, I used to do, I, I did Tai Chi for, for three and a half years, and I still do Qigong with um, Ming Tanggu, if any of you know who he is. He teaches online, and, and he does beautiful um, Qigong sessions. But what I've always loved, and, and I was doing the, um, the long form of, of uh, long style Chan, uh, it's been so long I don't know what they call it anymore. But I'd like you all to stand up and Thank you. and feel your feet touching the earth and get a sense that your feet go beyond the earth into the center of the universe or the center of the earth and feel that energy going down, feel that energy coming up and connecting with all that is below you. And take a big breath. And feel your head, your head in the heavens, connecting with all, all that is above you. And this is part of the oneness that we all extend in all directions beyond us. And, and feel at the right side of your body. Put your right hand out and feel that energy extend beyond, as far as you can feel, certainly further than you can see, and connect with everything that is out there to your right. And with your left hand, and take your left hand out, and feel the energy beyond you. And stand so, so put both hands down now, stand so you feel your hip bones on top of your feet, your back in alignment, your neck above your hip bones, your head just resting gently on your on your neck. So you're not holding your head up, but the head finds its own position. Keep your chin down a little. Finds its own position and relax your lower back. And just get a sense of body connected to your arm, to your heart, feel your heart. Then I'd just like you to lift your arms as if they're lifting themselves up in front of you. And feel that movement going up until you're about parallel to the ground. And a little louder. Oh, sorry. And pull your um, elbows in just slightly so your hands are as if you have a big rubber ball underneath your hands and you start pushing it down, pushing down that weight. And then when your hands reach down all the way, just let them relax. Take a deep breath. And again, let your arms raise by themselves almost naturally. And then turn your palms down, and with the motion of your elbows, bring your elbows toward your body, and push down as if you have a ball underneath your hands. Hmm. And I'd like to add to that one more little exercise of um, bringing your right hand up, and Feel the creativity coming down through your hand. And bring your left hand out. And feel that flow from the heavens through your body into your left hand. And I'd like to do a little switch there. Put your left hand up. If you're right-handed, put your right hand out, left hand up. And if it's your left hand to do it the other way around. So what we're doing is getting the energy from, from source through our bodies out our hand. And let's um, close the hand that's up in the air. Close that up. And feel what happens when you're not open to that energy. 
and see, see if you're feeling that same flow going out through your right knee. And you probably feel some sort of a blockage there. So if we're not open to the creative energy, it doesn't come out through us. And let's now open the hand that's up in the sky, accepting the creative energy, but close your right hand so you're not giving out that creative energy. And sense that blockage as well. Then open up both hands and feel again when that energy flows. So it's flowing from source through our body, out through our hand. And that's the creative flow. That's what we keep wanting to tap into. As, not, as, as if, or maybe it's not coming from us, as if it's coming from the universe that we're all connected to and coming out through our hand. And the continuation of that coming out through our hand is also sharing the work we do. So it doesn't stop here. It's important to share our creativity, and that's sharing our acorn into the world and making the world a better place. So that's our job, I think, is to make the world a, a better place little bit by little bit. And um, so we're going to try to do that here in our own little way. Great. So, um, <laughs> you can, so, so the way I'm running the class, is I'm going to be demonstrating up here. And the first thing is to do is to, and I'm, I'm, I know some of you are incredible artists and some of you are beginners, so we're gonna start all together with a new brush. And um, these materials that you're using are, are mine, so we'll be, they're brand new, but, um, but um, you'll be returning them to me. And I'll give you sources to buy whatever it is um, later on. So when we get a brush, and it's always wonderful to get new materials and things we're not used to. So we have to learn it. We have to learn what this brush does. And one of the things that I, I actually, um, we have, a lot of these have glue on them. So when a brush comes, it comes full of glue. And we have to um, rinse that glue out. But a little trick is we're going to rinse the whole brush out because we want a big brush. But if you only want a little brush, only um, take off the top part of the glue and then you'll have a... Um, narrower brush to be able to do finer work. But to begin with, I'd like you to put your brush in the water and really bash it down. And you want to get it and loosen it up so you do have a brush that's all loose hairs. And in keeping your brush, your brush is good. You don't want to soak your brush in the water face down. So every time you stop working, you want to take out as much water as you can and just lay it down. And in um, Asian art, we usually have these little um, brush rests, but I, uh, we don't have that here. So you could just put your brush on the side or as Colleen did it right across the top. So, we're going to start with exercises on getting to know the brush a little. How thick will the brush get? How thin uh, can we do it? Can we do horizontal lines? Can we do vertical lines? So that's going to be just getting used to the brush a little bit. And, um, and so I will introduce you to some different movements. And the book, and I don't have a sample to show you, so that's part of this going into the unknown, because what's one of the things I forgot. Uh, it's a sample of the book. So this is all going to be new territory. We're going to be making four pages in a book. And then we're going to, and, and you're going to have a, a paper that's around 20 by 15 inches uh, for these sheets that we will be doing a different exercise on each one. And I'll be adding some new tools as we go along as well. And then we're going to find our painting in our page. This is going to be our crop sheet. And everyone will have one of these to work with. And so every page we work on, we're going to crop our page out and cut it. And that's going to be the book. And this is 10 inches, uh, 5 inches by 20. Your actual pages will be folded in half. So the final book is going to be 5 inches by 10 inches. And we're not working on both sides of the sheet, but we're going to be folding the page over so your pages in your book will be on both sides. And then on the part that's open, 
That's going to be on the left-hand side of our book, and that's the part we're going to sew. So the right-hand side is going to have a folded edge, and the left-hand side is going to be um, sewn together. And then... And you're going to show it. I'm going to show you everything. <laughs> <laughs> and then the other thing is, we're going to do a collaborative project up here where everyone's going to do several marks, and for the cover of our book, we're going to choose a cover from the collaborative piece. Mm. So you will be going home with something that everyone has done. <laughs> so that's the basic thing. Um, I also want to bring in, and I'll be talking about this more as we go along, but um, I'm assuming all of you did the collage work. So you're familiar with Colleen's map. So in tying all this together and with the hidden messages, hidden meanings that uh, Tim has as a theme and our transformative images, we're going to do continue with some of this work. So we're going to work with, and since we're only doing four pages, you get to choose the four of these that you work with the most or that, that interests you the most or intrigue you the most or that you just want to do. So. Um, we're going to do some dreamy, some dreamy marks, maybe, or self. I love doing the, the, um, the circle, the Enzo. We're going to begin with that. So that might be your, your self part. Um, action and line, you know, that's going to be some great movement that we'll, we'll be working with. Uh, fears is a good one, um, and, and maybe that might be more contained. So you get to, to really express these things in marks. So that's part of our ambition here. So we're getting very ambitious. So, um, <laughs> so we're going to begin with, you all should have around four sheets of newsprint. And I'm going to start here, and plus ink. So you all have some, it's uh, Sumi ink, India ink. Mm -hmm. um, actually, I need one of those cups with ink. If there's, yeah. Extra right here, great. Okay. All right, and a brush. Okay. And so before we start, I'd like to talk about how to hold the brush. Sure, I have a question. Yes. When we work on one sheet of, of, of the newsprint, will it go through the other? It'll go through, and if you don't want it to go through, you can move it aside, or it doesn't matter. Well, we wouldn't want it to go through. Well, it's not going to go through so much. Okay. So um, if it's bothersome to you, and I have plenty of newsprint, okay. so if you want to just use one, but I also don't want it to go through the table you're working on. Okay. But um, for now, if it, um, yeah, just get a sense of it, and if it's going through too much, but these are just practice sheets. And these are not the pages of your book. These are not the pages of the book. Although I have learned that it's very important to always work on good paper because you never know when something's going to be good. Yeah. So <laughs> um, I have wished I, well, I guess you could always hang something that's on your print. But um, anyway, so traditional way. So oh, um, let me talk a little bit more about where I'm coming from with this class. So. Uh, I've been um, inspired by Asian art for as long as I can remember. I, I, I've never been to Japan. I know a lot of you here have. I've never been to China. But it was something about doing calligraphy. But even before that, when I was 12 years old, um, there was a new library in my neighborhood in the Bronx. And I would stop by and, and get my teenage book. I would take out the yearling and then walk over to the philosophy section. And I saw this book called The Importance of Living by, I think it was Lynn Yutang. I just took that book out, and every time I would go to ballet class, and on the way back, so I'd go once a week. So I'd come back, and I couldn't take this book out. And I'd start reading it. And, and it fascinated me that people talked about the heart, the lungs, like, like how to behave, how to have fun. You know, it was like so different than anything Western I had read. And so I realized I was just drawn to that kind of culture. Uh, and and uh, then I, I've done Western calligraphy since I was 16. But as I started working with the brush and seeing what art I was attracted to, and I think this is very important when to learn your own style or what you like, mm -hmm. see when you go to a museum what it is that attracts you. And to me, it was this very fluid kind of wabi-sabi kind of stuff. And wabi-sabi is... Um, 
is a Japanese aesthetic appreciating the natural in life, appreciating the, the uncontrolled, the, um, the things that deteriorate, the things that break and you put back together with gold, although that's a different name. I forget that, the name for that. But, but it's really appreciating what is. And it's a very good philosophy in life. You know, It's like, this is what's happening. So we'll be working with, uh, th th this is a Chinese brush, Chinese ink. I have studied some Chinese painting. But what I do is, uh, is more is abstract, not, not anything traditional. But holding the brush, we want to think of it as the bones of our body. And it's hollow inside, like our spine is sort of hollow, I guess. Um, and, and this is an extension, not only an extension of our arm, but an extension of our heart. So when we move, we move from the heart chakra. And you're already like all holding it right. So um, not too high up, you want to have some control. So about two thirds of the way up, you want to have enough leeway for things to move around. And two fingers out here, uh, holding it by your thumb, so that would hold it enough, resting against your ring finger. And then the pinky can help that or not. I think I don't usually use it. So traditionally, we would start like this. But you'll see we have to move it in different directions if we want to get a full flat thing, we're going to be moving it around. So there's different ways to use it, but, but traditionally we start like this. And so I'd like you to just start feeling the movement. Just hold the brush and move in, this, in the air, in the, your whole arm, not, not the wrist. So we're not going to do hardly anything from the wrist. So it's the whole arm moving, yeah. And I forgot the tw twins' names. You're Ryan. Brian and Blake. Ryan. Ryan. Blake. Ryan and Blake. All right. I'm so Blake. a little. No. <laughs> wait. Go ahead. Blake. Blake. Yes. And Ryan. Right, yes. Okay. Move. Move your whole arm. Yeah. Yes. 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 Just to get a really feel of movement <laughs> around. Yeah. And then. Not when there's ink in it. Yeah. Bam. And then come slower and slower, and, and set your table up so you could um, have your this paper ready in front of you. And now I think your brushes are all wet a little bit. So just come down and come down and, and then touch your, your paper and start doing some circles just with the water on there. Big circles. Oh, sorry, this is more of my stuff. Yeah, yeah, this is more of my stuff here. And then when you're ready, you might need to put a little bit more water on there. And when you dip your water, and any time you need to come up, and when I demonstrate, I will have you come up. So I will want you know, fairly easy access to come up. But when you dip your brush in the water, take off excess water. And then dip it in the ink. And you don't have to dip it in all the way at first if you want to just get used to it. Just dip it in halfway. and. And uh, point it is, is what it's called when you take off the excess. And then go down and, and um, do the same thing on your paper. Overlap circles and just get a little sense of the flow. Yeah. Sorry, could you say something about breath while we're doing this? Yes, keep breathing. <laughs> <laughs> Be, be aware of, so when I do a straight line, I breathe out. So I take the breath before the line and breathe out as I'm doing it because that will give me a straight line here. Um, but in something like this, just keep the breath flowing. And um, the deeper you breathe, the more connected you are to your body. So it is a nice practice to keep that breath and really be aware of it. Because again, we're trying to work from the heart, from the body. This is not a hand movement. Do we dip it in water each time before we add ink? You do not have to. So if you want a darker mark, you um, dip it more in ink. If you want it lighter or if you feel like it's starting to get dry, you could do a mixture. So several of you are doing this already, but but make some other marks and just play with the brush. And if you want to do another sheet to just start a fresh one and play, 
uh, go ahead and do that. And I didn't really plan for where to put your pieces that are wet, so... On the floor, under the table. Uh, under the floor, under the table will work just, just great. Yeah. And you can pile them one on top of the other, I, um, unless you have a particular reason to save these sheets. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't matter that much. Another thing to try while you're kind of on these goofy pages is to get some, and, and I worry about people that are dressed a little too lightly, but you could tap your brush, and if you watch this a little, you could tap your brush and get, get some little dots on there. And that's always a nice thing to play with. Sometimes we'll be wetting the paper first. When we have clean water, that's a good thing to um, start with. Uh, I often have spritzers. I, do you have any spritzer bottles of water? Yeah, I didn't bring any. One. One, yeah, all right. <laughs> okay, um, now I'd like to go into a little more controlled exercise. So I'd like you to take another sheet out and I want you to understand the, the capacity of what the brush could do. So, so I'd like you to come up here. I'm going to demonstrate just a few little things here. works out for you to be coming up and down once in a while. I won't have you do it too much. What's that? Yes. And John, if you want to do this, you can. Oh, yes. Okay, so I want you to try seeing how thin a line you can make. And for something like this, I'm going to put my elbow down on the page. And this time, since I am trying to do a straight line, I will be paying attention more to my breath. I'm going to go a little bit lower. Just kind of center myself. And draw a straight line down. So that was on my out breath, where I'm more now I'm going to take it and make it just a little bit thicker. You just turned your camera around. Oh, I did? Yeah. What did I do here? Now, I don't want to spend too much time on this exercise, but I want you to get this sense. So, And then next time, thicker still. That's the bottom left one. Yeah, there you go. Thank you. And now you'll notice I am getting some thin... I'm not trying to, but it is getting thin here and there. And that's a really nice element of it. But it's not what I'm trying to get. I'm really now just trying to get that evenness of of keep yeah. getting it thicker and thicker. At one point, I'm going to start turning the brush a little to the side because it's already flattening a little. It's amazing how much ink is in there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now I'm going to go a little bit more. And then I'm going to have you fill in the blanks. She and then she. coming all the way here to thicker. And I love, this is because I had a little more water on top. I did not <laughs> fill it all with ink. But at, at any point you need more ink. But of course that's also part of the beauty. Do you dip your whole uh, brush in ink? I'm doing that now. I didn't before, but this is the first time I am now. And then all the way to as thick as it could possibly get. Mm -hmm. So you get a sense of what this brush can do. Wow. Mm -hmm. sweet. And then you can either stay on this page or start another page. And again, we do have plenty of this paper. And you see some of it comes through, and at this point, that doesn't matter. I'd like you to try, just for a sense of control, doing that horizontally. Again, you can see my whole arm moving. Um, I'm not working from the wrist. There's no way to do it this way from the wrist. Um, the whole body moves across here. In fact, I should be more centered. And then at one point, 
you'll see you have to start going down like this to get it thicker. And then all the way here. And I love when the white shows through. That's, that's a really nice part of it. Since you're here, I'm going to, and I, and I don't want to give you too much at once, but um, I might. <laughs> when the brush is, is at this point already, you can stop playing with it. I mean, there's all sorts of things. Um, I don't know, making lines like this. So um, we'll go more into the other kinds of lines, but, but things like this are all wow. part of the repertoire. So, so these, these brushes are pretty amazing. You're not going to hurt it. And, um, and then I am going to show you, since you're here, and I'd like you to do that kind of in this order, and then the ends of. So this is something I, I come back to over and over again. It's the Japanese Meditation Circle, Enzo, E-N-S-O. And it's done different ways. You can start it on the top. You could start it on the bottom. Uh, I generally started it down here, uh, six, 7 o'clock, around 7 o'clock. It just seems to be what... Is that, is that because you're right-handed? Uh, it could be. But still some people, you, you could just uh, uh, Google YouTube uh, Enzo and you'll see people doing it in all sorts of ways. So um, I did it really quickly on the signs yesterday and now I'm thinking about it. So <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh no, how do I do this? Um, and it is really good to get centered first. And so I'm doing a little twisting here to get it to stay thick here, otherwise it would start getting very thin, which is fine too. Right. <coughs> it can be open, it can be closed. So, are you using your wrist? You'll have to tell me. Let's look at it again. Like I, I, I think I do on this one. Okay. I think I have to, to, um, to twist that around. Yeah, you did. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <coughs> yes, you're saying. No getting away with No getting, yeah, right. <laughs> oh, no, I, I, just, I was just observing. <laughs> <laughs> You said no risk. But but to do this kind of thing, yes, you do have to. Now, I could also do the Enzo like that. And there we have one. Um, generally, it's a no touch up thing. I mean, this is a, th this is how you are read. You know, it's like, all right, was this person present or not? It's so. And, yeah. um, and, but, okay. In, in Japan, we were made, made to only take, you take the breath and you let the breath out. As you're doing it. As you're doing it. And every stroke gets one breath. And you never stop <coughs> in the middle of the stroke and take another breath. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, you're, I you're, think I do that, but let me try that consciously. Yeah. Because I have not had Japanese training. Uh, so. They would say, ah, so feeling's on very good, but no breath. <laughs> 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 All right. So breath, breathe in first, and then, then the. Let it out first. as the. And, and that's how I do the. The straight I lines. You, you probably do when you're yeah. alone. And yeah, but I mean, even in the straight lines, I do it on on the out breath. So. Uh -huh. Nice. Yeah. You see the the breath shows where her stroke came up at the very end. See how it's open. Uh, the the stroke is open and it's solid where she starts. Mm -hmm. And then it goes around, and if you think of the experience that she had when she started, and you just follow that around, and it's following her experience, and you can see, oh, she's letting her breath out here, here, and now she's let her breath mm. out. And that's what they meant. If they couldn't see that uh -huh. openness in your stroke, then they knew oh. no breath. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. And here is where the paper shifted. So wow. I had to kind of... Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> yes. really we could have a little story here. Yeah. <laughs> but, but it's you true. This, um, you corrected, though, which is pretty... Yeah, so it's good. Yeah. All right, so I would like you to um, try all that. So again, we're going to start with more control, some straight lines vertically, and getting it across to the thickest, some horizontally, some play time. <laughs> Oh. and some circles. And I have more paper, so um, we'll 
we'll get you some more paper. And what do you do one more, like, that's where it comes down? Because I didn't watch what you were looking at on there. This one here? Mm -hmm. From the beginning? The, the thinnest yeah. one? Yeah, just okay, one. So I'm, All you have to do is one. And well, they, they're a little different as I go along. Okay. So to get control, because if I'm up here doing a straight line, my hand's going to shake like crazy. So I'm going to hold it a little bit closer and even put my wrist down here. Speed is important, too. So you'll have to, to get your own speed. If I did that really slow, it'll probably, you know, it'll probably shake more. So, And I'm also moving my body away because I need the room for this whole thing to, to move. And then as I go further down, I'm... And uh, in a properly set up table, you would have a weight here. So you wouldn't have this problem of the paper moving as you go along. So. All right, any, Thank you. anything else? All right, give that a try. This is important to be standing. Um, when I do this, I do stand. Yes. <coughs> It was not resting at all. Okay, yeah, it, that was up in the air. Yeah. Coming around. Yeah. In fact, I think the only time my arm actually rests is on those thinnest lines yeah. when I'm really trying to get that straight. And then once you're ready to rinse your brush out, just rinse it out. It's better to have two cups of water. Um, but I don't think we do. Uh, so you have sort of your dirty... Your first rinse is your dirty rinse, and then your second rinse is your cleaner rinse. But I think we're going to make two with one here. Did you get, you have two now? Uh, let me get you more paper. I think we're all gonna need some more. <clears throat> and thank you for all your comments and help. It's totally what I want, and welcome. Have them available. Wait, wait, wait. I've got more over Whichever works for you, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Make sure your brushes are, uh, that the glue is out of the entire brush all the way to where it attaches to the bamboo. Do we pull out the armband? Oh, there's no doubt. Not your wrist on this. Your wrist was on, yeah, not yeah, your wrist. So go ahead and do it. And, from the end. and you can hold it, you're holding it more like a pencil. Oh, there we go. A pencil? A pencil. Yeah. yeah, so. Let me come around. Okay, okay it's my first one. This one. So if you're beginning here, yeah. so 
I'm very close up to this one. It's angled up for that, just because I want the control. Yeah, close to but, yeah. And then as I go thicker, I have to, instead of being straight, yeah. I have to go to the side a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Right. And then as you do it, I'll... Yeah, very nice. Hard time with consistency. Um, but don't worry about it? Don't worry about <laughs> it at all. No. We're hardly going to be using straight lines. So uh, this is just for you to... And I want to work with you a little bit more. Let's get this brush. Is not no, no, no. It's not. All oh, the glue's not out. I know. That's yeah, right. yeah, yeah. I'm wiping. Oh, okay. 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 I thought that if I had a tighter one, I could well, control it. Well, you can, it but, um, yeah, but that's not everything you can do with the brush. Right, 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 right. You'll be missing most of the things we're going to do. The glasses are going to get splashed. Much new colony. Yeah. 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 It, it's a different time, so it's not always. Not um, that much right now. Just right, right. Yeah. but when you get to your fifth stroke, yeah, it's within all the way. It has to be completely Oh, right hand. Oh, 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 Wonderful warm up exercises. Good, thank yeah, you. Really good. I got it off already, but it's a good yeah, paper ahead. too. Yeah. And for this Self exercise, thick. it's always so, mine usually so thick. Uh -huh. And what oh, you yeah. your, your shirt. Um, it dries pretty fast though, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Let me show you my right. Okay, I would hold the brush up a little, little higher like that. Let, 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 okay. let, let All right, so when it's the thinnest line, uh -huh. you want to touch like my wrist to the paper here. And then when I start getting thicker, Here. So I'm not holding it like that. It's either here or here. Okay. Here, like, like for the thinnest line, I'm holding it straight up and down. Straight up and down. Straight up and down until I get to the thinnest point. I mean, it just takes sort of a okay. mechanics of it. Yeah. So this would give me something different. So yeah. So if you have marked straight up and down, yes. yeah, then I can get it. And then here would be. And then when I do the thickest, you want to get all, the thickest would be like that. I just want you to understand. Thank you. Yes. It's mostly to understand. Yes, because when you when I ride, I don't go up and down. Right, right, right. I'm trying anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Very good. Thank you. Yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. That's um you know, I realize that when when I think until I got here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I think I have Oh, oh okay. I mean that's right. I I see that I do that. And so I'm just doing it like this. Uh huh. And then it happened again like that. And I thought, what am I doing? And then it happened again here and I'm not 
I'm not staying with the brush. Mm. I'm not. And when I stay with the brush, look how beautiful it is. It works. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. But I think that's the way I lead my life. Ah. <laughs> yeah. yes. Well, that's a new mantra. Stay with the brush. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, nice. <clears throat> There's a couple of paper towels. Do you want me to work on you here? Yeah. Okay. That's beautiful. Okay, let me do that. Oops. Okay, so the thin is thin. You want to put your wrist on the paper and hold close up. And take pay attention to your breath on your out breath. Now I'm not only moving my arm, I'm I was moving my whole torso. Oh. So basically okay. nothing here is this is not very conducive for it's a little bumpy there. But I mean I'm not straight in front of this, but but everything everything is moving from from my body. It's not just the arm, it's it's the whole thing here. Try it. Mm -hmm. And for oh, the thinnest, you could put your arm down. Yeah. And still hold the brush up straight. Yes, yes. And the arm down. <laughs> mm -hmm. Nice. Mm -hmm. but see, it, I know, I know. It's okay. We're never going to be making straight lines. This is, um, this is the hardest part of the class. Let's put it this way. This is a lot like welding. How is that? Yeah. That it's like welding. Because you use your whole body, too. Uh-huh. You use your, you know what I mean? you got to stay one with the other. Uh, oh. It's like, this is like Ooh. a cycle electric. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or you get burned. Yeah, or you get burned, or you know. Yeah, you can do that one side of it. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's quite interesting. But I'm not using my whole body. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I am an intellectual understanding. You're not a lie. I'm just kidding. Alright, um, so we just have one sink, so I'd like you to start, I, I'd like to start with a little clean water soon. So after you're done with the exercise, there's a sink there, empty your water, clean your brush out. Um, it doesn't have to be perfectly. And let's start with some fresh water and a clean brush. Whatever you think, it's it's fairly non toxic stuff. Yeah, it's <laughs> Okay. Oh, all right. Good. Outside. Mine's well, like hard. I think that's what that song said from Valdez Press. Fairly non toxic. Oh, I think so. Yeah, go ahead. I was ready, guys. I wore all black. Yeah, I know. Me too. Okay, we're going. Oh, that's a good one. Everyone have a foam brush. 
first one, maybe just every table. Let's see, there's a few there. You have only one here. Now it's time to look at our handouts. <laughs> oh, okay. So, um, so what you have here are uh, some I, some of the uh, the theory behind wabi sabi painting and getting chi into our work, and the difference between Asian art and Western art. And so, I'd like to begin with on the left hand side. We have the seven Zen principles of Wabi Sabi. So, um, you, you all know if you've been to a Japanese garden or seen Japanese art, how minimal it is, how simple it is, and yet how powerful it is. And, and that comes from these general principles. And this is actually taken from a uh, Zen principles of Japanese gardens, but it, refl uh, it, it reflects definitely on doing art. And simplicity, or elimination of clutter. And this is a, a way of life, too, and this is what I keep striving for. I don't get it, but um, just to have that clean desk when you start. And 
and just the, the clearing of the mind. So, so coming in without a cluttered mind. Uh, asymmetry or irregularity. So we're not looking for evenness on either side, and yet there's a balance. I have a slideshow on this where, where I show uh, this beautiful tree that you know you would think it would fall over in a minute, but it's got its roots underneath holding it up. So there is some symmetry in there or else it would have fallen. Uh, but, but what we see is just something so beautiful that, that is not what we think of as normal balance, but it does balance. Beautify by being understated. And so one mark is sometimes enough. And this is something I struggle with my own art a lot. It's like, that was too easy. You know, <laughs> how do I say that's good? How do I hang it up? It, you know, it came in two minutes. But sometimes that's the most precious stuff. And I always remember uh, Picasso, when someone looked at him, he did this you know, gorgeous uh, uh, painting of a woman with like seven strokes. And they said, you know, you did this in two seconds and you're going to sell it for a million dollars. And he goes, well, it was 40 years in two seconds. Mm -hmm. So we have that behind us. And, and I always go over that. Someone asked, like, is the small, the miniature, you know, how do I deal with the worthiness sort of, of of something so small, and, and it's like, this is the precious moments. These are, it, it's all important. Naturalness, and this is a very big part of it, and we're gonna be working with some more water and, and work with that flow of, of the ink, where it meets water and, and what happens there, the stuff that cannot be controlled. And the subtly profound, rather than, this is what I'm doing, it's sort of like, leave it up to the viewer as well to see what's being done. So you don't have to boldly say everything. Freedom from habit or formula, let's, let's arise what arises. And, and tranquility or an energized calm. And so we're gonna talk a little bit more about that with the energy of white space. <clears throat> so on the other side, uh, the mist, oh, I think I have my brushwork. I'll go into that in a minute, but there's two other handouts here, and this is, I love this, in uh, 2005, this was in England, there was a show called The Mystery of Empty Space. This is something in Western culture and Western life we tend to leave out, emptiness. And it's very important in art. We don't need to fill every, every bit of space. Let there be the energy come up on its own. And part of this also is, in Asian painting, water is left, it's not left out, but it, it's white. It's the paper. The sky is the paper. Other things are, are the paper. It's, it's like we don't have to fill it all in and make it a color. So it's that, that whiteness that gives it its place, gives, gives the black its place of being. So this is stuff you could read later. And um, and she so so the, the wabi sabi the naturalness the empty space in a painting and chi is the energy in the painting and we'll be looking at that in our own work it's a little hard to describe I, I was going to show you some slideshows on how I think it's it's used but. But it's, it's the essence of the painting. It's like you know it has, it, it's a statement. You, you, you could feel the energy in there. And I, I could point that. I was like that. a teacher, Matt, and then they said no breath. Mm, uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so you. can't see the energy, though. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have to. Yeah, we have to be able to see that energy. Yeah. And feel that energy. Because these are wonderful examples. Oh, thank you. Yes, so let's go into my handouts here on the brush. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. No, that's okay, that's okay. I always say you leave, no. Uh, here's another handout on, on the um, sumie and white space and how important it is. And the other thing is, in Asian painting, in, let's go from Western painting, often the heaviness is on the bottom. We feel weighted and we think of the sky as light and earth as heavy. In Asian painting, very often it's the, the lightness is on the bottom, the heaviness is on top. And I did that just slightly with my long painting, Journey to Ixlan, where it started heavy, and then it got light. And I turned it upside down, and I thought, well, maybe the heaviness should be on the bottom. And it didn't work anymore. 
And then I thought, no, the journey is like, like from birth and you're, you're light and you go through sort of this heaviness mm -hmm. and then you end up going out the top and I did have a little mm -hmm. more white space on top. Mm -hmm. So that was not planned, but when I saw it and I was able to see what I did, I understood it more. I understood the energy of the painting and how the energy rose instead of staying stuck on the bottom. We're not going to be doing final paintings. We're going to be doing pages in a book, so it's going to be a little different. But whenever I start looking on your page or, or show you how to look at where to crop, I find the white space first. So I'm saying this now because I want you to leave white space. If you don't leave any white space, I can't find it. <laughs> and, or you can't find it. And that's what makes the page beautiful is that white. So I want you to be as aware of what you're doing as what you're not doing. And then the last page is a series of pages. One is, is a symbol, is a uh, Chinese brush stroke. It means life energy. So we won't be doing actual brush strokes like this, but it's always a good place. You, you could find uh, ideas for brush strokes in Chinese uh, characters. You just want to make sure you don't say something you're not supposed to say. So, <laughs> like, yeah. so you might not want to take a whole character and manipulate it and make it into some other character. But but you can see the energy in the stroke and also the white space in the stroke. That is as important as where, and the same thing in Western calligraphy, where the white space is in the stroke is as important as where the dark space is. This one on the bottom on the lower left was a piece I did when I was playing with Chinese sort of characters and, and thinking, how do I know when it's good? And since we, I'm not that, I'm not fluent in Chinese, you know, how do I know? And I did probably dozens of this stroke, and this is what I do very often, and, until I felt it. And it was a, a piece called, on grief. And um, how do you get through the pain by going through it? And I wrote a poem about it, and this was my painting for the poem. And it was like, when I did it, I knew it. Mm -hmm. So that became my answer. <laughs> Here's some lettering on the, the lower right of, of going in and out of thick and thin mm -hmm. strokes, so a way to play with whether you use letters or just marks. And Tim, do you have one of these handouts? No. Okay. Um, so just different ways to use the brush and different ideas. On this next page is Japanese script, a running script. On the left hand side, on the, on the left was Japanese, on the right was Chinese, and that's mine in the middle. Mm -hmm. And I looked at both of those wow. examples as I did the one I did, and I did, I, I tried it many times before, because it was on a painting, and it was the final thing of the painting, and it was either going to make this painting or break this painting. And I kept doing it, and it it wasn't working, it wasn't working. And then I put it, the, the thought in my head, beautiful. I want this to be beautiful. And then I was able to do it. Mm -hmm. And so it was just having that intention of beauty. And it's, I think, a pretty good combination of both of those, those images. Mm -hmm. And the white, the white that is in this, you know, you would say it was like black, white, and gray marks? Yes, the white was done with I believe that was done with um, why, uh, with, with uh, resist. When, when you do, resist. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. So resist is like uh, rubber cement, and you could paint with it, and then paint over it, and then rub it off, and so it'll retain the colors of the, the paper coming through. So that's where the white came in. Oh, that's my question too. Oh, okay. Yes. <clears throat> the next page is some work by Toko Shinoda. Now. Uh, she recently died, she was 107, Japanese artist, who really transformed, who, who, who took, who, who started doing abstract art in, with Japanese aesthetics. Uh, her work is in the Metropolitan Museum of Art, it's obviously all over Japan. In fact, there's a gallery in, out near us, in Bodega Bay, that has several of her prints. And Stanford University has a lot of her work. And 
And just, I, I want you to notice the simplicity of this. And on top of her prints, these are lithographs, and she will go in and do freehand brush strokes, mm -hmm. sometimes in red, sometimes in black, sometimes in gold. And, and it, it, you know that she knows exactly what she's doing and where she's putting these marks. Because if they were anywhere else, it would be completely different. So someone who really, and if you get a chance to look her up elsewhere, Toko Shinoda, she is a master. The next page is more, since I come from a calligraphy background and um, I always like to add letters, uh, just other ways to make brush strokes, working with contrast. And this, uh, this next page is done with a flat brush, not the brush we're using now, but they were warm-up exercises for a master stone carver when he was carving the Roman letters. And, and he would do this playful stuff. So it's, it's a way to loosen up and get free. And then that last page is actually uh, Moreau. Oh, yeah. Some of Moreau's uh, wacky marks. So I'm, I'm sharing this also as, as ideas of ways for you to, like if you run out of ideas for mark making. And if you also run out of ideas for symbols, just go look at the ceramic blanket that Colleen and her women did. I mean, it's that, that's loaded with gorgeous symbols. So we have a load of, of things to work with here. So are all these that you showed us in this handout are done with brush? Yes. Not anything like that? Not anything like that one. So we're going to work with that one next. See, I tell you, you're always one step ahead of me. I know what to do next now. So <laughs> I was actually going to start working on that. But um, yes. Now, also, when did it, I don't think you got this handed out. The China markers. No, no, they were they were. Um, yeah, yeah. No, I don't think I gave it to you. This is something we're going to have to share. I think I only have five of them. If I could get my hands on them. Now I'm trying to decide if we should do a practice exercise first or go right into our good paper. So uh, are you ready to just like move along? We have, well I don't have extra paper much, but. All right, we're gonna do one more exercise on, on the um, newsprint. So let me take a sip of my drink, whatever it is. I'm getting hungry. show you a few different things. So why don't you come on up here. Mm -hmm. And I will show you on this paper. But So I pretty much have four pieces of paper for you to work on. And I don't want to make you nervous about that. <laughs> but basically each one. But, but yeah. we're only going to be don't using. Screw up. Yeah, don't screw up. The paper we're using, you'll be able to get two different places from it. And I I guarantee we'll, we'll be able to go right ahead on the new good paper, but let me have one sheet of that paper. Yeah. Great. So this is the paper we'll be working on.
calling it our good paper. It's Arches Text Wove Paper. It's a wonderful paper, especially for bookmaking. You could fold it easily. Uh, for calligraphy, you could scratch out mistakes. It takes everything beautifully. So I would like to look at Colleen's book here, and you already might have some attachment to, to some of these uh, items here. I'm going to start with self, ego, as, as the, the wholeness and the enzo we did. But none of these have to be stuck on this. It's just having a concept in our head sometimes is an easier way to begin something. So I'm going to begin. Oh, who has clean water? Does someone have a little bit of clean water? Oh, there's clean water at my place. Here, too. okay. This is great. It's cleanish. Cleanish. Cleanish is good. So these are, are a great other brush to work with. These are very cheap foam brushes, and it's a nice way to just get water on the paper especially if you have clean water, and if you don't, that's also okay. So I'm just going to just, oh, I'm, I'm working on the paper. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to live how I say. So now, this is adding the wabi-sabi notion to it. Uh, I'm going to just, it's starting to dry already, but I'm going to just start with my Enzo here. So I'm going to center myself. And think of myself. I mean, this is this is my ego, my ego today. What is it that wants to come through me today? And so here is where the magic starts happening, because I have the water on the page. And sometimes it... <laughs> and I love what's happening yeah. here, where the water didn't happen. Now what's nice also, and I gave you each of these, these are just little bamboo. Oh, look what it's doing. It's continuing. Yeah. It is continuing. Now if you ever want to stop some of it, just take a paper towel and stop some of it, but I'm not going to do that. But I am going to run some marks in it. And I love, this is sort of the, this thing of mine, it's like whenever something's wet, I love to scribble in it. And so I'm going to put some marks on there. And I do want to play with you and your marks a little bit first. Maybe we'll have to do that before we start doing this. Play, good. <laughs> um, oh, and this, oops, these break. They do all sorts of things. But <laughs> this is where I could start coming out and do some things. Mm. And then this is... worked with these, Marcus. They're really fun. And I only have five of them. I, um, these are China markers. And, and, and it's kind of a, a waxy marker. And it's a great thing to do something like where you can't see it. So, all right. So this is ego self. Now, if you want to put some words in here, uh, we could do something. But I'd want it to be really free and loose. So nothing that you could read. This is kind of your hidden secrets book. No one ever has to know it it means even if you show it to them. So let's say, um, I can't even see what I'm writing. I'm actually, whenever I do this kind of stuff, I might start with words and then forget them. New language. New language. <laughs> Esperanto. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. As we call it, it, it oops, is a semic writing. Mm. A semic. Aesthetic writing? A semic. A-S-E-M-I-C. It's, um, it's all the rage these days, actually. It's oh, writing right. without semantics. It has to be oh, how yeah. It's that calligraphic kind of mark that I could get. All right, so you know, this kind of stuff's fine. But then if I do this, well, it didn't really happen. Yeah, a little bit there. So I might have had to have done it a little darker. And this is a different brand that I've used before. But some certain things start coming out. It's like writing with wax on an Easter egg. Yes, <laughs> yes. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So, this might be all I need for this page. Because what I'm going to do, and I like some of that energy that's here, is crop that. 
and it'll crop just uh -huh. like that. Uh -huh. Now later I could go in with color, but we'll get to color later. So we don't have to overdo these pages, <coughs> is what I'm saying. And so inside the frame is the size of the page. This will be, and, and it'll only be half. We're gonna it's hold gonna the page. Half, We're going to fold it, so it's gonna be that half and that half. And this could be really nice. She's made a book before. <laughs> Uh, I also will be bringing in some walnut ink in a little bit. I have to mix it up first. And some red paint. So this is like the first draft of this. So what I want you to do is four pages. So I'm going to explain, uh, just maybe, can I have, let, I might as well do all four. John, three more of these sheets here. Sure. Why, why would that have come out, or why would that have stayed so dark and so linear. That part that in margin? there? Yeah. Like a little cross. Well, just that, that whole, dry that whole area looks like it's scribbled. I oh, I, I, I top. She scratched it. I did like, scratch it. Oh, you did? Oh, I did scratch it. Oh, I see. Okay. It's yes. almost like scrimshaw. Huh. Yeah. I, yes. And I could do more up scrimshaw. here. So I could... Um, actually, with these little things... I could start making some other marks. Is that bamboo? This is bamboo. Yeah. I could, now we did some more play. So now I sort of know I have that. This is my, if I want it to be my ego piece. But I could drop that too. I could go back in and make some, I don't want to kind of ruin that, but I might. <laughs> you know, just mm -hmm. add a few little things maybe just for the heck of it, see what might happen doing that and that. But I really don't want to fill this up. This is like all I want to do. And maybe go back in here with some of these marks. And maybe just something like that. So I just dip that in the ink plain. So now I have a lot of stuff going on. And I don't have to worry about making a good painting on itself, but let's see what just happens here and how interesting that is now. So I might have two paintings, two, two pages from, the, from this one. And then I'm off the hook on the last one, or if I really <laughs> screw up, I have, I have some backup. What if you put that at an angle? Yes, you could do that too. Yes. Uh, you're, um, there's only going to be a short amount of angle here. So it can work. And if your book is smaller than this, we'll just crop it down. So if some of your pages are angled and, and end up being a little too short, mm -hmm. we could just trim the whole thing down. Okay. So that's an option, too. Uh, Sherry, when you're trimming the size, are you going with the outside of the frame or the inside? The inside. Inside. Okay. Inside. Yes. Uh, Sherry, um, so, sometime would you write down on the piece of paper so we could all see it, the name of those pencils? Yes, I will. I'm, I'm going to have to send it to you. I will send you a list of all the materials okay. that I'm using. Great. Often in a class, I have you buy everything, <laughs> and um, and then you know it all. But um, this one, we wanted to provide everything for you. By the way, there's no no materials for you for the class. It's being covered by. Oh. It, it's being covered. So don't yeah. worry about oh, it. Um, so so we're going to do four. We're going to do four like pages. That. Well, right? I'd like you to, similar, I'd like you to then to take another idea. So I kind of start to do itself. And I don't have to stick with that. It's just the idea to enter the page. No, but just I mean, the, idea. the four. book is going to be four. Four pages. Folded. Okay. Four pages folded. So let's have, there you go. thank you. And this I'm not going to work one on top of the other. And so four pages folded, that will be eight pages? Yes. Okay. Just check. Yes, yes. So what would be like dreams? And so it could be a real dream I had or, or imagination possibilities. Mm -hmm. So to me, that's kind of soft for me. It might not be that way to you. So what, what, what might be a dreamy line? So I might start this one. Well, dreams have lots of secrets in it. Mm. Let's see if I could do something here. And, um, You know, it might be if you wrote on a harder surface, this might come out better. This is not quite working here for me. 
But anyway, you'll have to experiment with that and, and pass this around. All right, so now this is just my dirty water. So dirty water is a great thing to work with. This is like software. It's crazy. Just like what? Like software, like, software. Uh, like a computer. Oh, program. look. Ooh, oh, wow, look at that. Wow. See? So here's sort of my dreamy line. That now, did you press, you because you pressed down harder on that one, obviously, right? I pressed it, I, 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 yes, yes, I think when I wrote yeah, here, yeah, I pressed yeah. down harder. Yeah, now I could dip in partly, just partly on the brush, maybe not the whole thing, and twist this. So you could get some really nice mm -hmm. effects. Let's see what else I could do. Mm. Dip the whole thing in now here. It's running around again. It's so nice. Yes. You could take a brush and, and just paint on here where, where. Mm -hmm. Now I don't want, it, well it could be all dreamy, this is dreamy. Uh, usually I counteract something very soft with something straighter, something a little harder. So maybe, maybe I would put some straight lines on this. I kind of like read once in a while. And, um, <laughs> and I could do some of my Semic writing across here. So when I'm doing this kind of writing, and, and it, um, it might be something we should practice first. And I do have some paper for us to do a little bit of this work on it. Because I originally I take my, I, I, we go from our handwriting, from what we know, to stretching it out and playing with it. So um, would you like to start with some of this mark making first and then just add it to our repertoire and then so when we start you'll already know how to do this. So I think you I think when we sit down, when we sit down, we'll do some practice here. I'll lead you through. But anyway, look how beautiful this is. But there's an advantage to not doing your practice. Right? Well, that is true, too. <laughs> yeah. I just want to loosen you up. Yeah. Loosen you up with this mark. So we'll do a little play here. But let's look at already, and you see how simple these are. And look how nice that is. Oh, and there's man. my dream page. Mm. I want to step into it. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe that's enough for now. Um, I think you can get. All right, I'll, I'll do one more here. One more. One more. Um, action in life. Let's do that. I might go into all of them, but all right, action in life. So this one, opposite of the dream, I would think, is a little more energized since it has the word action. So. I'm just, and, and this is what I do sometimes. I, I, I go ahead and, and picture it. And a lot of my work I visualize. I'm very good at, at seeing what's there and what needs to go next or what can go next and then visualize it. So visualization is an important part of painting. If I just stand here long enough, the painting's going to form. <laughs> <laughs> so this is action. Action starts off the page, action ends off the page. It's, it's a continuum. There's mm. some action. Succulent. Mm. And then I respond to this. So I often mm. respond with, with something that, that's uh, contrasted to it. So this is very energetic. Maybe I'll add something softer. Or maybe not, since I am trying to do depict action. So at this point, I don't know what I want to do. Um, I don't want to block the action, I don't think, but I could do an Enzo right there. That's sort of, I like, this sort of gives me sort of that mother womb kind of feeling. Mm. And I could do, and maybe do a few mark around until I, ooh, nice. Um, and that kind of not nice, not, not perfect circle, mm -hmm. that just worked yeah. perfectly. It goes well with it. Yeah. In there. And I can clean this brush off and of course, now we have only dirty water. And you can also, on another piece of paper, always test your brush. Let's see what happens if I don't touch that, but do touch that. Just fill in a little there. That doesn't really happen. Make it a little more womb-like, maybe. And then what can I do here? Maybe nothing. Maybe wait till we start working with red paint, or or um, or the walnut ink. I'm going to bring in some brown ink. So I think that's really nice for now. I'm going to. Oh, you're going to use red as well. Yes, just just as highlights. 
So look how nice that is. Yeah. Wow. Although this mm -hmm. is going to be cut right in half. No, well, not half, but that's going to be cut there. So that's just an interesting thing to note. You're folding. Mark. That's the fold, yes. That's the fold. Okay, so now I have my three pages. All right, and my fourth uh, creative wellspring. What, what's pretty opposite? I'm going to go into uh, fear. What do I feel? All of a sudden, I felt that fear raise in me. <laughs> <laughs> There's plenty of that around. Yeah, right. Um, do I want to get into that? Um, but, all right, so all of a sudden, this image came to me. Um, sort of a thin. break. That's my day off from the news. <laughs> <laughs> and then maybe, you know, something kind of compressed. Um, I don't know. One person's fear might be someone else's joy. Who knows? Um, True. All right. And then I could go into some, and this will dry differently here. Maybe this one needs Lots of, you know, really get that action in there. You know, what does this feel like? Mm -hmm. um, and do I want to soften this page? Maybe this page will have lots of lots of red. You know, when mm -hmm. I, I start doing mm -hmm. some red ink. So I'm going to actually leave this one because we've got other things to come back to with it. So, yeah. And I might just end up using that. It might not end up meaning fear in the end. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. It's like I, I begin a painting uh, following a poem, and then I don't care if the poem is there or not afterwards. It, it's what got it started. So I really love that. And maybe something here, maybe not. Maybe just red splatters. Who knows? So I don't know at this point. But this is enough to get it started, the first round. So I'd like you to go back, but, but I would like to work with some of these squiggly marks first with you so we have on that newsprint. yes yeah. I think on newsprint with pencils so you each should have a pencil mm -hmm. and you mean the white yeah. pencil there the regular pencil. no 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 the your you should have a lead pencil oh. at your table so you borrow the white ones? yeah you borrow and the bring them back. every table has their four pages oh you did it and great the, Thank and there's you. one yeah. empty cup per table for the yeah. walnut Oh, nice. I got to mix the walnut ink. Yeah. So I need, this is someone else's. I so, think but I, they all have the paper on their desk right now. Great. Okay. Um, Tim? Yeah. Okay. I think great. this is working very well. Yeah. Just to, yeah. And yeah. So it's, it's much better yeah, way than if we had tried to talk about it. Quarter after people 10. are Ooh. expressing this. All right. We got to move along. Yeah. Quarter after 10. Okay. So. Sometimes I tell people like I that I pass. I go, I'm really that's, smiling. That's, uh, <laughs> 
All right, I'd like to move along because we really just have 45 minutes to get these pages all done, and we're going to have to find yeah, the time I got it. to work in between during lunch. We'll, we'll figure this out, but it's... Uh, <laughs> Where are they going to do lunch? Uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll work something out here. Yeah, I took your lunch. Oh, okay. No, you can. Um, you can this is just it. a very quick exercise. Um, where I want, on, on, this is a practice on the, uh, on the news part. So I don't know who this is, but put this way. Um, yeah, that, that, when I was in On the news I didn't know who this was. When I use the good people. Oh, okay, I think I just checked, uh, checked this one in. Oh, okay. Sorry. All right, someone's missing a sheet, but whatever. Um, this is just a way to loosen you up, to, to get you ready to do some of those marks. So what I'd like you to do is just write half a sentence in your handwriting with a pencil on, on your paper. Right. Write like half a sentence, a few words, in your handwriting, with pencil, on the newsroom. Mm -hmm. Big or small? Start with what's comfortable to you, and then I'm going to be getting you to do it, to do it bigger. I have a suggestion. I write, dream about Write a couple of words about your collage. Oh. Right. Okay, cool, all right. A couple words about your collage. Um, and just a few words, maybe five words. And then I'm, I want to lead you step by step into making this totally illegible, but still yours. So, um, so after you do that once, do it larger and faster. You're already there. <laughs> larger and faster. And then, if you have any ascenders and descenders, so ascender is the part of the letter that goes above, like the L. Descender is, the, is like the bottom of the G. Extend those. Do, your, do it again larger and extend those down or up. So, so like, well, um, you don't have here, like there. Go way down. Do it again and go way down. And you might want to work a little bit smaller. Yeah. So you have room to, to do yeah. that. Okay. All right, I get it. Oh, do you need a sharpening pencil? Um, it's okay. Yeah. 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 All right. Back here, there's a, like a blade. Okay. okay. What are we doing? We're taking our handwriting and extending it. So write a few words, maybe about your collage or something. <laughs> write it in your normal handwriting, and then write it bigger and faster. Um, yes. Same thing. I never use school, so I can't go fast. What about printing? Go printing and um, just start drawing your letters. When you, when you do it fast, it will join. I print. I don't write. Near. Near. And we're going to want to contain it. So, all right, so I'll show you the final goal is to be able to do something more of this size. So I'd like you to do big and free, and you're all very big and very free. <laughs> but I'd like to contain it a little because the goal is that we're going to have some free marks on our, on our page. So, yeah, something a little smaller. Yeah. Uh -huh. Now, with, there's a rhythm that we always usually have to our writing. I'd like to break up that rhythm. So some of the letters will, will go in one direction, some in the other. Yeah, so, so in the end, we're, we're after some cool-looking marks. And to the point where we can't read at all what you're writing. Even if you are writing. I'm not writing words. Sometimes I start with ABC and then I drift your thoughts. We're getting into doodling here. You're getting into <laughs> doodling, yeah. Yay. And then um, let's start another page and just try to take that freedom you're just finding now. Oh, are we using this print? Oh, yes. Oh, no. All right. <laughs> Keep that. You might use that for a later. Right. Well, I have extra paper. Don't worry about it. 
Um, using newsprint. Okay. Um, so what did you say was the last prompt? Um, try to make some marks from what you've done with the freedom you discovered already. And, and so in our pieces, here, it might become marks that you will like to use. Okay. So it's still kind of scribbly, um, not very loopy. Not loopy. Not loopy. Not loopy. Not loopy. Not loopy. And, and not just soft and sweet. Try to get some energy in there. So it's, some things might be compressed. Some things might be extended a little bit. And so, oh yes, this is, yeah, the kind of marks you were doing, and, and uh, oh, you're writing words still. So, so try to do it without words now, or, or little things you can't use. Okay. So we're doing the, the three marks. Yes. Uh -huh. And also not all evenly spaced. So we, want, we don't want everything to be, I mean, you're not, actually, you, you've got some good marks there. Left handed. Oh, that's the other move. You want to try this left handed? Yeah, like something like that. And, and even to the point where it's, it's oh, illegible. Oh, yeah. And yes, you can go with your left hand. But no curvy. No curvy. No loopy stuff. Oh, you mean loopy, loopy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And in different directions. So if you have everything in one direction, you want to add some things in another direction. And even maybe do some marks and leave a space and then do some other marks. So this is going to be what we consider in abstract painting the foreground, the, the detail work. So when you're in the painting, it'll talk to you more about what needs to be done where. But I just wanted you to get some feel to loosen up. And I think we need to move on to a painting now. Let's. So we're, we're, we're just getting little snippets of everything. So that's what we're doing there. So now I would like you to begin. So look at, if you don't have Colton's chart, or remember it, I, um, we'll do it anyway. Do it anyway. No, no. What? We will do it anyway. We'll do the chart anyway. Oh, okay, right, because you're, you're engrossed in it. Yeah. Yes. So what we're looking for are four pages with a different entry for each page. So however you want to enter. You can enter it just with joy, sadness, I'm tired, or I'm excited. So it could be anything, but I'd like it to be a specific thought that, that you begin with that you might leave. So you're not bound to it. So it's, it's to get that first mark on the page. And we probably have one sheet in front of us instead yes, of having them all. Yes, on, on this one, time. keep the other pages aside. Do not, do not get one page dirty from the previous one. So put your pages underneath everything would work. Mm -hmm. So Khalid, if you have yours, uh, yeah, just work on one. Because yeah, we want to have a fresh page for each one. So are we still yes. using this? No, now we're moving on. Okay. Now we're moving on to the good paper. Um, are you ready for just a question? Oh, yes, please. Okay. So um, my question is, you started one of your things, but it's just because you're teaching us, but do we, is it good to start with this to practice the wet brush? You don't need to practice. You could just go ahead and do the wet brush. Okay. Yes. So how, how much do you load this brush? I couldn't tell. Um, load it completely. Just put it in and wipe off some. So, so yes, I know you're looking at me like you don't know what you're doing. So, <laughs> and that's part of the practice. So we don't know exactly what we're doing. We certainly don't know what it's going to come out like. So you could begin with this page. Put a little water on that foam brush. And this will loosen you up because you know you're not going to know what's going to be. And you can start just with an Enzo. And don't worry if you haven't practiced the Enzo. Or you have, but if you can't do it, or remember we're, we're cropping these pages. So whatever you do on this page, 
Most of it is not going to show. And Leia, just don't overwork. That's it looks gorgeous, but just don't. Believe it. You don't need to overwork. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's very hard to stop. And then so next goes this one. And then you can go to that next brush. Yes. So, so just, all right, take a minute. And then use the, this one. Yes. But take a moment to think of what, what energy you're putting into this page. And when you're ready, then do your mark. <clears throat> yeah. And now, what you can do is respond to that mark. So the way I try to respond to a mark is I ask myself, what is that mark I just did? Is it straight? Is it black? Is it um, soft? Is it hard? And what is the opposite of that? So if it's, and if it's gorgeous, you could just leave it. <laughs> I don't want to scare you on that. I mean, I hate when someone says this is great and anything you do is going to ruin it. But it's really beautiful. <laughs> um, ask yourself what what could be the conversation started here? So, uh, uh, Donna, yours are it, it's um, a little soft. It's dark. You, you don't have any anything really light. So think in terms also in value. So uh, the value scale is uh, from white all the way to black. You want to have different values in your piece. So some of it is show, showing up right here, yeah. um, but maybe something that's lighter, like maybe this with, with a little bit of ink on it. Just a little bit of ink on it. Yeah. Or, or on this, and, and do a straight line. So, so this is all one thickness. Also, do you have multi-thicknesses? -thick is it all of the same thickness? Then add something that's a little different thickness. Um, your, your maybe then. Blake. Blake, I'm sorry. This is beautiful. So you might want to just stop there and see. Where's one of those cropping? I'll get it. I'm sorry. So I want you to start recognizing what's good when it's good. And you might not know if it's good or why it might be good, but all right, I'll, sh I'll I'm going to just hold this up. I don't know if it's going to leak, and if it does, it's going to add to it. Is it going to leak? It is. But, but it's, it's just really interesting a whole lot of different things are going on here now this is going to be folded in half and cropped so remember that too but it's enough to just say let's see what it looks like with that and just how interesting that is and what i love of this is that this oh, bit's all soft and mm -hmm. then you have it harsh here and i think that's beautiful and you have all this space I bet this so right. I, I would pizza. say you're done at least no they were done for now yep. okay, okay. Mm -hmm. so that might be done for now. You might need something like on the edge here. But what you do now, I'll get you, John. I'm not sure where all these are. They might be either out there. They might still be. Everyone needs a cropping tool just to start seeing what they're doing. Yeah. Okay. And let me get to. So, oh, go ahead, do it. Yes, of course. Uh, Tim, that looks beautiful. You might want to stop. Mm -hmm. I might want to come prevent me. I might want to come. <laughs> That's my role now. It's gorgeous. I don't want to let it into But look how gorgeous that is. You have the energy. You have the white space. You have the interest. Different things going on. You might want that one. But right now I like. I love how it goes from a solid line to the, yeah. the spread out line to that. I mean, you have so much going on here. But it's not overdone. So I would stop. We can go back. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> what a good thing for you to be doing. I'm doing it. Okay. Good. Yeah, look how beautiful that is. Thank you. Oh. Oh. And you know, so if you see this whole paint, it might not look so wonderful. Right, right. But once we crop it, and, and Thank just you, sir. do something, yeah. find the simplicity in that. Yeah, yeah. It's gorgeous. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, let's look. Yeah. So one of the things I know, this kind of mountainous, and that's okay, 
But it's, it's a little too, too much the same. Okay. So what can you do to, you know, something like that might work too. Okay. But you still have the same thickness everywhere. Right. So maybe something with a little thicker mark or that foam oh. brush. Okay. And that's gorgeous. You like it? I can see it's really thick in here. It's okay. It, it's balanced by that lightness there, and it's balanced by that. And again, it's going to cut down. Or it's cold. I think you have one of these? Yeah. Okay. I will take your word for it. Okay, let me go around. Yeah, to go to, go to the next one. Okay. And the same thing, just feel the energy you're into. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is really nice. I'm sorry. I like it. Yes. I'm uh, going mm -hmm. right to the cropping. Mm -hmm. yeah. oh, yeah. And you can now, work you? with some straight lines coming out of here and something. If you oh, want. to expand it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, now, would you do that yep. space up there? Or would you be more inclined to do that? Put it down even more. I think this is also interesting what's going on uh, here. I like mm -hmm. what's going on there. So if you leave that, you could do either one. Mm -hmm. really I mean, cool. even up gotcha. there, yeah. I just done that mm -hmm. with. Yeah. Um, okay, let me try that. Yeah. 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 Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Ooh, nice. Nice. Let's just walk. And that's gorgeous mm -hmm. going on in there. You might, since this is going to crop here, you might need something darker in here. Maybe some lines crop here. Okay. But not much. So wait a minute, maybe <laughs> have, have you seen this sign? I like that. I, I love that going, you know, bringing the eye very real. So, yeah, this one I just think, I think that works. Yeah. This would be too. Okay. Oh, no, maybe just some straight lines, but that might be too bad. But okay. Or up here. Okay. Again, Again in here, too. I love that. You can make that a little darker if you want, but I think it's beautiful. Are we doing all the pages on this? Or we just stick all right, so oh. mm -hmm. let's look at and then try um, to do some a little <laughs> not quite so all the same. So add some other, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're still on number one here? Yes. Okay. We still have one? No, 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 go ahead. Start your number two. He's a little behind. What would you think? I'd say let's look at it. It's really interesting. I think that's really nice. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I don't know where you came in, and we were talking about entering with... Coat only yeah. book too, and, and no. all right. Well, I know all of that. Okay, yeah. so so we're doing a page of each one of them. This is, I would say, it's a little full. So where's the most space? Like when I cropped it, I might something like this, but or I mean, we are going to crop it anyway. But I feel yeah. like this is more emptiness in this. Uh -huh. So it might need some real darkness right here. Okay. So when this is dry, you can go over it. Great. And add a little uh, black on it. Okay. And I would suggest, I like how you have, but even if you were to crop something like that, it's very usable. Yeah. I like that. So, so some differentiation. Most of your marks are about the same thickness. Right, right. So add some uh, contrast in the, in the marks. So on this, you have very different, dis disparate things. Mm -hmm. um, they don't relate to each other. You have this, 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 and that. So if there's a way to make one mark across there, maybe with that brush, maybe um, even uh, so it's, it's more ink and then it goes to less ink. Something, it doesn't have to be in the center, but something to tie all of these together. Yeah, that's pretty pretty. So it could be 
Those look like birds. Oh, you think of that? Yeah. No. That's over done? No. No, that's lovely. And I got to mix the wall then in. So you might be able to add a little bit of background color with that. Yeah, I like that you told clean that up. Ooh, nice. Yeah. Preferred way to be very loose. Oh, I didn't hand out those um, kind of ones. Yeah, use that on the next one. But yeah. Just no, to go but, yeah, let me let me just dark. let us everyone know that they're on. So these China markers, um, use them and pass them along. And if you know how to make the points more pointy, um, you just pull on the uh, cord and unravel. So I'm going to, I'm going to actually, I'll, I'm going to leave some here, here just to inspire you, here to inspire you. And then, all right, we've got some music that we need to do here. I need my page, that's it. Can I just make it? Keep thinking about your collage and keep mm. thinking about the map and the words and try to stay focused with yourself from yesterday to today. Well, does she have one? Well, just pass them around. Well, I'm saying maybe they could oh. share, because I've got two people at my table. That's why I was trying to evenly. Oh, go ahead and use it and, okay. and then turn back. There's only five of them, so let's leave it like this. Yeah, they're okay, everywhere. Yes, one thousand. Are we going to the third person? Yes, go right ahead. The more we get fun. Are we saving the last page for something? No. So you also have four pages when we're done. Remember, I messed up one page, so yeah, I Yeah, there's next to one. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> yes. and I think Everybody that's remembers that. that. Okay, so on top of everything you're doing, I want each of you to come up and make at least one mark on this page. I'll start, and you can either respond to me or do something on another side. <clears throat> I want a variety of marks. This is going to be this is going to be our cover that we get to choose from. So I'm going to start with. My phone brush, so let me get Okay. Yeah, give me another one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, good. Oh, this is going to be nice. Look what you're doing. Oh, no. And, and um, look at what your neighbors are doing and what, what's good. So, so get ideas from other people, too. That's... The beauty of really being in person, finally, mm -hmm. and working. Yeah. Oh. Care how big? I don't care how big. No. Oh wow. Okay, you can start. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, we set her up. Okay.
got a little carried away. Yeah, I do. I okay, cool. Oh, this is a nice little piece right here. Nice. Thank you. All right, follow that one. <laughs> Can I use this water? Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is really yeah, um, very good. Yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. And that's why it's so wide. Yeah. yeah. this big. We have to get 14 or 15 marks on this page. Okay. Um, can you figure this out?
Okay, when we're doing this now, I do want to say a lot of the marks look the same. So I'd like something different, maybe something with, with the um, brush, some different values. Not to put you on the spot, but... <laughs> I wore black, I was ready for the occasion.
try blending some of this. So with this tool, with water, I don't know how much it was still wet, but to, to get it to blend a little bit more together. Like, see, not, not as much as that, but that's beautiful. Put a little bit more. You can even add a little bit of ink back to this and then start blending it, so that will blend the wet in. Yeah, so your folks are rather minimal. I still have. Oh, this is cool. Yeah. Could you explain what the walnut ink is? I mean, it's just brown it's ink. But it's charcoal. Yes, walnut ink is walnut crystals. It, it's, um, I think it's, it's uh, the holes of black walnuts inside of that, or it might be inside the bark. I, I'll actually have to look that up. Yeah. Um, they're called walnut ink crystals. Should I take that around to every desk? Yeah, so I'm trying to figure out what's the best way to transfer it. Maybe with those squeezers. You're going to... We're going to have to spend you know, power just rubbing a piece of charcoal on a stone Okay, so this is this is some walnut ink. It comes from uh, black walnuts, and you buy it as crystals. But you can also buy walnut ink as. Uh, Several of us will give you full reports of grinding walnuts for my children. Yeah, right. <laughs> First look it up and see. So one way to go about adding some color to this, and it's just subtle. I, I just did those marks there. Mm -hmm. um, one way is to just, well, I like what I did there. I'm going to do something like that again. You know, and just add a few little yeah. symbolic things, maybe. Uh, walnut ink. This is still full of dirty water, and I don't want to ruin my ink, but... Um, Do you want some clean? Yes, please. Thank you. And if you have a clean brush, that would be even better. Okay. No one has a clean brush. No one has a clean brush. Don't, 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 don't take the time to clean it. I'll just okay. take whatever you got. Okay. Cleanish. <laughs> Cleanish is... It's less funky than mine. That color seems to ground it in a way. Yes. 
So I just put on some on half the brush. That might be enough for now. Here's my other pages. All your pages, you, you don't need to do this on all your pages. Whoops, everything is messy. Not everything needs it, but let's see what just happens if I do two. Something like that. I'm just trying to do some different strokes on each of these things. Just get some ideas. Something like that. The other thing is I have a little bit of watercolor, and I don't have watercolor brushes for you, so um, you could clean your main brush, and I'm just going to put some color, and or you could choose some colors from here, but I warn you to not go overboard with colors. So I like to just use red. It used to be considered very kitsch in China. Was to add color. To it, yeah, they're mm -hmm. very, very cheap thing to do. Oh. Mm. Um, well, they definitely not changed their mind. I mean, it was like modern art coming in or abstract art coming in. Mm. It took oh, them really? a while. Yeah. yeah. The, the purity of just the Sumi ink was so important um, that to bring color in was to, you know, just yeah. decimate it. But they definitely have accepted it now, but mm. it wasn't just like a it, new thing. Abstract art coming. Why would you do that? Except for the chop. The chop was in red. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So but you can make a little chop mark here. With a chop. Yeah. Chop would be the Chinese um, stamp. stamp. It's mm. their name card. Their name. Oh, okay. So okay. just something Why? little like that. So okay. yes, I agree. To just do but sometimes you see many chops on a page. Yes. yes. And every owner puts their mm -hmm. chop on it. Mm -hmm. So, so oh. somehow the chop is not considered. Um, uh, doesn't, it's not interfering if you just put your own ship chop on it's, it's her signature. <laughs> That's her name. Yeah. Yeah. So now that was dirty red ink. Um, but look how nice. Look how nice that yeah. does to that now. Oh, yeah. wonderful. You know, I might that might leave that out because I want more of that. Or this might be crop. You know, so you don't know what's going to be on there. If you want clean. There's another one. Uh, if you want cleaner, just. Clean your brushes. So I just want to talk about time. There's going to be another speaker here now. Uh, but we could leave our tables here. I don't know. I, I think someone's coming in. Bob's coming in at 1. But you could work through lunch on and off, uh -huh. and we'll just leave the tables up. And Is then... coming in at 1? Isn't Bob giving a talk at 1? On oh, I don't know what... Tim, what's the time? schedule? Right now, we need to just break up and sit down. Okay. First, he's going to make her presentation okay. from here. Okay. Oh, okay. And then we can go back to work, so you don't need to clean up. Do you want me to go ahead? Yes, go ahead. Uh, well, or wait. No, no, no. All right, so, so, you know, there's all sorts of ways. These are just accents. Is it chocolate? Yes. 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 But this needed something square. Since I'm the last one, do you want me to actually want me to? No, but go ahead. And we're going to add more. I want color on this. Can I use color? Why don't you go ahead with this? Yeah, John's going to do that. Um, where is he? Or, or you can start. Are you done? Yes. Um, Leah? Everyone has a cup already, so keep this stirred and just do a couple of these. Is this just like, software, yeah. like calligraphy? Is like, you know, like Photoshop? Hey, for you, everything is like software. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I know. Thank you. Right. Computer, you don't even know. Yes. Ooh, I love that. Yes, Man, so that's exactly what I want. And, and some things to tie things together <laughs> without <laughs> taking away the white space. All right, I think we need to stop now. Uh, please rinse your brushes. Off the best you can, even if it's just in the dirty water for now. Oh my gosh, we are at tilt. For those of you who are looking at this, we are taking a break for a presentation that is not going to be streamed because it is about uh, an individual's experience in the civil war in. Ethiopia and 
the situation is so dire there that she can't allow anyone to see her and make a connection with her family because it might endanger her family. So we're not going to uh, broadcast that, but we will continue with this workshop after she's done. So I don't know when that's going to be, but maybe in about an hour. So thank you, and we'll see you again.